Good evening and welcome to another edition of the Magpie Circle Live. And this edition, a special edition, as the club looks ahead to its 5,000th league game, will be down at Gillingham on Saturday. Who better to have on the show for this one than the club's all-time record-leading goal scorer, uh, Leslie Brad. Les, good to see you, my friend. Thank you, Paul. I hope your words don't relate to me being there at the start of it all. Oh well, I was going to ask you what was it like in the in the one thousandth league game, but uh, yeah, I know you're only a twinkle. I know you're only a little twinkle. Uh, and uh, I was going to say at the other end of the uh, at the other range, a uh, uh, range of the age spectrum. <laughs> so that's putting you down a bit as well, lads, isn't it? Uh, Boys of our millennials, quite, quite popular demand. Quite a few of the flock have been asking after you, Chloe. Good to see you again. Yeah, thanks for having me again, Paul. Yeah, no, always, always, always. Right, so Chloe's got a hectic social diary, unlike me and Les. I could be on here till midnight. <laughs> uh, but Chloe's going to be leaving us off the show. Uh, Les will obviously be able to chat a little bit about um, the 5,000 landmark, uh, a few of his goals, I'm sure. Uh, let's just get a few of the early comments from our lock this evening. Athenian Pie says, good evening all. Great to be back on the balcony after being there for the league games over the last two weeks. Still smarting from Mansfield and certainly think we have the mentality to put it right. Um... D -d -d Hello everyone, says Karen Knight, Pete Cowlishaw. Mansfield have been trying to get out of League 2 for 10 years. We are just back. They turned up, we didn't, put it behind us and move on. We'd all have taken where we are at this stage. Evening Pauls and, and gang, says Derek Gill. Malcolm Shearston, I was at the 3,000th game versus Forest and the 4,000th game versus Rochdale. Stephen Newton, evening all. One defeat does not a crisis make. I'm sure we will bounce back. Chris Gosling, evening. Saturday certainly posed far more questions than answers. I was at the 4,000th league game, Rochdale, and will be attending the 5,000th at Gillingham on Saturday. Uh, Stephen Newton, our first game in the league ever was Everton away, 1888 to 1889, first um, season of the Football League, wasn't it? Of course, we are founder members. Um, uh, Pythagoras, likewise, at Rochdale and will be at Gillingham. Uh, David Dawes, we are happy where we are, but we cannot ignore our defence is poor. Paul Huskisson, evening all. Uh, Chris Gosling um, was probably stood next to Pythagoras. The 4,000th game should have been a home game. But due to a postponement, it ended up being a Rochdale. Uh, Pete Cowlishaw, I'm listening from Northern Ireland here. Won't be at game 5,000, but will be following in club colours. Colin Scott, listening from Stocksfield, Northumberland. Colin Scott, a.k.a. Uh, dad of Kedwin. Hope Kedwin is coming along well in his rehab, Colin. Uh, Andy Eason, evening all. Uh, concerning injury list of eight now, uh, JB Skipper, Jody Kedwin, um, Badge, Will Randall, Chicks and um, Tian Brooks. We'll come on to that in a minute. Um, first thing, uh, gratuitous plug time, uh, right? You've all been badgering me for the book, right? I know it's Kindle number four. I don't know how. I don't know who's, I don't know who's been buying it. Someone must like me somewhere. We're four in the Kindle uh, global football rankings. Um, some of these are called Ancelotti and Crouch. I can't quite seem to get above. But this is the first copy, real copy of the book. Look, there you go. Pages. Yes, there and the back. I got it this afternoon. So I've just signed the proofs off. Um, and we hope to have it in two weeks. I'm not going to give you a definite date because I know you'll all then be saying, oh, I want it at Reps and whatever. Uh, I've, I'm, I've got two weeks um, I'm told we will have the copy. So we'll keep you posted and there will be some details of advanced ordering. There it is. The one and the only one at the minute. It does exist. Right. OK, let, let, let's get Saturday out of the way. Um, Chloe, what did you make of it? Con considered thoughts on a Monday evening compared to 2.30 on a, on a Saturday afternoon. And we'll come to you next in a moment, guys. What, what do you reckon, Chloe? It's disappointing. Of course it is. Um, it, it's the big occasion and it's the one that people have looked forward to since we've gone down into the National League. 
the one fixture that most people were looking out for as soon as we came back up was this one. Um, and we've got a full stadium, as we have done a few times in the past. Um, the atmosphere is there. After the second you minute, minute, you think, no, we, it really is happening. And it just kind of went downhill from there. Um, I think just to echo what someone said in the comments, I, I've been saying this to um, friends and family since the game. They've been in this league a lot longer than we have, haven't gone up or down. They've been mid-table, secured playoffs, just missed out on playoffs. But they've had a, lo a long time in this league to try and get out of. We've we've not really strengthened the squad hugely since last season. We've brought in some great additions, um, but we've not made that many changes to what was what was a National League side last year. Um, we've obviously had an incredible start to the season. Um, but maybe it is a bit of a reality check that we aren't going to walk this league. Um, they, they were the better side. Yeah, absolutely. But I think the most disappointing thing is we, we are better than that and we could have put on a better performance like that against like our rivals in the league. And obviously it was it was disappointing. But um what can you do? Obviously, we, we know we know we're better than that. And maybe it was the occasion. Uh, maybe we've just faced the best side that we've seen so far, which I agree with Luke Williams on that. Um, but yeah, hugely disappointing. I you can tell we've got problems, but I'm I'm looking forward and thinking. Look, we've got big games coming up. If we manage to beat Gillingham on Saturday, it's not forgotten about because it was Mansfield. If it was any other team, it would have been forgotten about. So, yeah, we've definitely got questions and we'll see how we bounce back from it. So, hugely disappointing, but hopefully it's uh, just a blip in the road. Uh, a few more comments coming in. <clears throat> and now you become, I wouldn't say semi-famous, Chloe, but recognisable. A.D. Clark, one of our flock. I know A.D. well. Evening all. Great to see Les and Chloe back. Overheard Chloe having a rant at the game on Saturday. <laughs> it was definitely a bad day at the office. You see, when you become like, like you know, people know you and recognise you, Chloe, you're never off duty. You have to be really careful because uh, you be warned, eh? Me, me too. I'm surprised no one's turned me ever in, in the top of the pavers at the minute. But anyway, just there you go. You see, people are listening to you. Um, and I would love to be able to listen to Les Brad in a minute. Uh, Les is having a few technical issues, as you can probably see if you are watching it. Uh, he's being put back into the room now. Leslie, um, I hope you can hear us. Um, can you hear us, Les? There is a, there is a vacant expression uh, on Les's face, which tends to suggest he's having one or two sound problems. Um, we'll come back to Les shortly. Stick your thumbs up, Les, when you can hear us. Or um, du -du 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 -du. okay, my my two penneth from Saturday. My two penneth, and and my, my, it is unimportant. Okay, my my views. Let's you know, my views are as inconsequential as the hundreds of others on social media in that false world that they inhabit. Um, I still have a bit of a glow from being back in the Football League, if I'm honest. As much as I preach to everyone, it's results, results, results. Um, for me, just to... I'll give you an example. First round proper of the FA Cup draw yesterday. We're, it, we're, we're in it properly. The balls are coming out. We're looking who we're going to get. I take a degree of satisfaction that we're not in the FA Trophy anymore. Um... And I think that if you look at what the club has achieved in the first two and a half, three months of the season, record number of points uh, for a, a newly promoted club out of the conference um, was top of the league. And let's be honest, if it's one game, it's one game more than we all thought we might have done. I personally think there's a much bigger gap between the National League and the Football League than we give it credit for. I think, yes, Wrexham and Notts were exceptional teams and it would appear Chesterfield may be following suit in that. Um, but look at Wrexham as well. They found it really difficult as well, as well as us. Stockport found it really difficult last year. you know. And, and I would still maintain that I think Stockport and Wrexham will be in the top three. Uh, come the end of the season I think Mansfield will be very very close so if I if I try and look at it holistically I'm actually really pleased with the start that the club has been able to make and I, and I do mean really pleased and I think Luke Williams and all of the players deserve huge credit um, for achieving what they have it's almost like 
we kind of think we are the Manchester City, yeah, of League Two, you know, and that we should have Jack Grealish's, Rodri's, all these best players in every division, in, in every position throughout the team. You know, it's brilliant that we've that, that probably 99% of teams in this division would want Macaulay Langstaff, likewise a John Bostock. So we've got real talent in, in, in our team. Are we conceding goals too many? Yeah, but would you rather concede eight goals less and be 12th in the table? Look, clearly there are things to improve upon, but I'm actually very happy with where we are. I understand from your kind of perspective, especially Chloe, for me, Mansfield are a local rival, but I don't really attach a great deal of emphasis to a game with Mansfield. That's not being disrespectful to Mansfield. I come from a different era where I would view Forest as our rivals. That That is the game that would really get me going. So the fact it's Mansfield... I don't attach a great deal of emphasis to it. Um, Les, are you? Are you? Can you hear us again now? I can hear you loud and clear. I hope you can hear me. We we can hear you. Right, look, the, the, all, all, all the telephone lines, the internet <laughs> lines are working. Leslie, give us your view because your view is is important, right? As an ex-player, right? All the rest of us, all the internet numpties, uh, social media numpties out there, it's unimportant, OK, other than it's an opinion. What was your take on Saturday? Well, I think going back to um, um, the previous week at Barrow, we, we got in front with an early goal and the manager in, in his interview after the match was very unhappy that um, we allowed Barrow back in the game and they got an equaliser. So I felt watching the game on Saturday, I thought we came out of the block superbly. Uh, we got at Mansfield, we got the goal. And then I think there was possibly ultra cautious um, caution from the players like, we're not going to give this away, we're not going to lose it. And I thought everything all over the pitch became a little slower at that stage. Um, the passing um, around, particularly at the back, it allowed the Mansfield players to close in on us and um, it, we put ourselves under pressure and I think it allowed though, Mansfield to get into the game and, um, you know, we conceded that uh, I thought I thought it was a poor goal to, for the equaliser and, you know, then we, we had a tough second half um, but we have to do better. Um, you have to do better, I think, from 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 dead ball situations. I know if I was being sitting next to Brian Stubbs, he wouldn't have been too complimentary on 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 the goals that, that went in. But um, no, I'm I'm not going to be over over, over critical at all because we've we've had a fantastic start to the season. I think all the players have risen to the challenge, and we're doing really really well. I just think it was a, a a day on Saturday where, you know, we just took a foot off 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 the pedal a bit when we were on top and Mansfield got in. Um, Nigel Clough's been working with that group of players for quite a while now, and um, yeah, they they they're, they're going really well. Um, but we we can't concede goals like like we are doing. Okay, thank you, Les. Um... A.D. Clark, uh, sorry, uh, James Moore, evening all. I'd rather not reflect on Saturday. Well, we're just doing it at the start of the show, James, and getting it out of the way. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Dale Pikett, it's a bit concerning that only Colchester, Newport and Sutton have conceded more than us in the league. It is an interesting statistic and not normally the case that a team that's been top and second has one of the three or four worst defensive records um, in the division. It's quite, well, I think it's very unusual. Um, Chris Gosling, I, I think it's time to either put some trust in Macari and or Tipton um, or send them back to their parent club. That's an interesting point. Uh, evening also, Shane Walker. We are NCFC. And now we move on to Gillingham. Uh, James Moore, uh, 90, we're 90% of the time higher in the league than Mansfield, but they always seem to be our bogey side. David, Amy, I would give Macari a run in the team, played well against Derby. 
Atrophis, if I pronounced it right, I probably haven't. Makari deserves a shot. Might have been the original plan to put him in, but Cameron being out would have cancelled that. Uh, Athenian Pie, I think this sums it up quite well. Uh, possibly one of the most polarising opinions. Seems like 50% expect the back-to-back and 50% are just happy to be back uh back in the league and uh basically uh take their time getting promoted again he says i'm in the latter camp so immediate promotion as opposed to a steady build if you like um atrophis adds heart wants back-to-back promotions but he- but head says we probably aren't ready for league one yet uh chris gosling do you think the lack of squad depth means we are uh burning out primarily our same 11 players due to not really being able to rotate. Is it catching up with us? Um, we'll get some more comments in a minute. Chloe, here's, here's something I want to ask you. And we'll get Leslie's view on this as well. Knots have achieved success getting out of the National League and getting to the top of League Two by playing, um, not unique, but it's a brand and a style of football that is cert- that was certainly very unusual in uh, in the National League. Uh, and there would be a small number of teams playing this style. Certainly when you look at the number of passes and those metrics, Notts County are off the chart compared to everyone else. Now, we saw Mansfield on Saturday, uh, strong centre-halves, resilient, organised. Uh, we know Wrexham are like that with their central defenders and with, they nick a lot of late goals. I've not seen Stockport... I'm pretty damn sure Stockport will be that formula. And, and, and Les has already touched on this, conceding goals from set pieces and those sorts of things. Um, uh, where, where are you um, with carrying on exactly the same with this aesthetically very pleasing style of football that has been incredibly successful and would appear to be, would appear to be a template for the owners in the way they are expecting their team to be set up compared to how much, if any, do you think we need to adapt a bit? There is always a call. We need the big six foot four centre half, as has already mentioned, Brian Stubbs and that sort of thing. But inevitably, I would suggest finding a six foot four centre half that can head the ball like Brian Stubbs and Craig Short and can also bring it out from the back like Pedro Richards, uh, an old sweeper from not many moons ago. There ain't many of them around. So do you want to see significant change? Do you want to see any change? Where, where are you with the style and, where, and the way we're approaching things? I think if I went black and white and when would I prefer to play the football that we're playing, concede more goal, um, concede more goals, but essentially create a lot more chances and therefore should be scoring more goals, um, but can also lose a game by playing like that, like we've seen against people like Mansfield and Sutton. They're both two ends of the, uh, ends of the spectrum. Would I rather play kind of shut up shop and go for the result right now, or would I prefer to play the aesthetically? good style of football I'd prefer to see what we're doing now um I know it's hard to compare our start of the season to Mansfield's on paper you could probably say they've had a tougher run um but we are still above them you can only beat what's in front of you would I prefer to have had their start of the season where they've only conceded 10 goals but they've had a lot of draws they've not lost one game this season um but essentially they've won maybe one nil when they do win and a lot of nil nils and would be a point behind us, or would I rather be in basically the exact same position, but have played a lot better football, but also been a lot more annoyed with scrappy goals? I'd rather do what we're doing now. But of course, there's room to adapt. Um, I think the squad depth is interesting. Um, But we, we can't build a whole team just in this summer of the one of, of the summer that's just gone after we've just got promoted. This is going to be a rebuild. Whether we manage to do it in the first season, then it's probably an even bigger rebuild next season to get ready for League One if, if that's how, where we end up. Um, obviously, we've, we've added great players, but there's obviously there's room for improvement all over the pitch. Um, we've obviously got very good attacking players uh, and then we've got like very good options on the bench. Obviously, we've got Scott, but then he's injured. And then once you kind of have a couple of injuries, you you do look a little bit thin. But of course, you're going to you can't have 
a 10 out of 10 player in every position. But we can obviously talk about the defence and they're probably are better footballers, even in the system that we play now, that it can make less defence de- defensive mistakes um, and still be able to play out with the ball. Um, the, the biggest problem is, for me, the set pieces um, and how you weigh up um, how we how we defend those because obviously that is a problem because at the moment we're we we're playing in a certain style of football and but getting beat as set pieces and you you'll see a lot of those and if that's losing you more games than it is winning you then that's something to definitely look at um, and I think midfield as well we we do look thin like we've got Jim O'Brien who's a great option um, for a couple of games definitely cup games but after that it, it looks thin. Um, so th- there's always been improvements to be made, but where we are now, would I rather be have had the start we've had or had the start Mansfield have could play in kind of opposite styles of football? Yeah, I'd, I'd absolutely prefer to watch what we're doing and see how far it can go. I mean, at the start of the season, I'd, I'd have taken third from bottom. I think, I don't know if getting ahead of ourselves is the, cor- the correct phrase to use, but obviously it's, it's getting everyone excited and we, we've had an incredible start, like you say, um, with our points tally and everything like that. And maybe we are getting a little bit of ahead of ourselves and we shouldn't just be expecting to beat these teams. We've obviously got to get used to a new league um, and seeing where it goes. We've got a very difficult month and we'll see how we come out of it at the end of it. If we end up making playoffs, then I would absolutely slap your hand off for that now. And we're a couple of months into the season. Um, playing this style of football shouldn't get us relegated and I very, very highly doubt it will. So if we can make it work and it wins us games and we can see what we can prove on for next season, then brilliant. But this brand of football is what what gets me excited. And no matter what style of football we play, I'd still be there. I'd still be supporting them, whether we kind of go back to days in the past where we've had people like Sheridan come in and either Martin Allen to a, um, to a certain extent. And th- there's so many different managers that we've seen with so many different styles of play, um, no matter whether we're hoofing it to a big number nine or whether we're playing it along the floor like we do now, I'd, I'd support them either way. Um, but this is the best brand of football that I've seen in my, what, 12 years it's not very long of supporting them in the in the grand scheme of things but it's the best that I've ever seen us um and it's the most success that we've ever had so why would we drastically change it now you've just got to put all of your support into the team the manager and the owners and it's worked for us so far obviously we can always tweak it but I the results this season to me it's not all about results this season um I don't mind it being a bit more about the brand of football considering we've only just come up yeah results are are great and if we do end up going up then fantastic but I'd rather stick to this and see how far I can get us Leslie welcome back um how sustainable is it as an ex-pro to concede the number of goals that we are currently conceding and stay in the top well, let's hypothetically let's talk about the top three automatic promotion places. People talk about Kevin Keegan football, don't they? You know, they score four, we'll score five, and, and that sort of thing. I'm not saying that's what we do, but we do concede an inordinately high number of goals for our position in the table. How sustainable is that? Well, I can only talk from uh, the days that I I played and um, we appear to be having one or two problems under the manager Jimmy um, he, we were built up on not, not conceded any goals Well, I know Leslie did tell us earlier today that he was having a few problems with his internet and that they, they certainly seem to be um, continuing for the moment. We'll try and get a better line um, to Les uh, shortly. Um, plenty more comments coming in. Um, 
James Moore teams that have undone us have all seen how we play. They high press our defence and Heeper and stop us from building. Mansfield had five to six players constantly we were, in our half, we're at, almost man to man. I did notice that actually that Mansfield stuck we, basically five players on us as a press lost, in 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 our half when I, we had the ball. I didn't know, and that's clearly a tactic that Nigel Clough has decided to employ with some success on Saturday in a one-off game. Um, the current wing-backs offer no defensive uh, backup. Uh, they are just um, wingers, really, says Chris um, Gosling. We Maybe like to try it a have back clean sheets and build from a solid um, It wasn't base. about scoring a lot of goals. And I'm sure... Uh, There's, there's had a good go at trying to get through the internet systems there. It looks like we're still uh, a little bit challenged at the moment. Uh, James Moore says, I'd like to see Chickson back and go to a back four. Atrophus, I mainly want back-to-back -back, um, promotions as that gives us a much better chance of keeping Langstaff and Luke Williams. Um, James Moore, uh, Rhea Plan B. We've had a Plan A for a season and a bit, Chris. <laughs> I love that we haven't got a plan B. That it's a great line that is habitually used. Um, Dale Pikett, Mansfield went man for man on us and stopped us playing our game. Um, Chloe, uh, while we uh, try and sort Leslie out, um, oh, so Daisy, we are having all sorts of technical problems tonight, folks. Um, talk to me. Um, when I spoke to Macaulay Langstaff for uh, an interview. The squad are very much of an opinion, as perhaps we should argue they should be, um, that promotion is definitely on for this group of players this season. Um, you alluded to expectations being raised um, so high by being top after 10, 11 games. Um, well, what, what, what do you take as an OK season for you this year? Having seen us get top, but also you were at Sutton on the opening day, as was I. You saw us get against Mansfield. What, 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 have your expectations gone up, tempered? Where, where are you? I think I'm still very similar as to where I was before the season, but a little bit more optimistic because I didn't know what the season had in in for us really I'd have taken like I said earlier third from bottom now obviously that's being a bit pessimistic um but to be completely honest um anywhere from mid table to pushing playoffs um I, I definitely take as long as we've got something to fight for all the way through the season um which I, I can see that as almost a definite um at least I hope anyway um We've 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 got a hard run of games now. I mean, like you said, there's a, there's a difference between the national league and um, league two. Yeah, definitely. And the the teams at the bottom on like the gulf that there was in the the national league between the top and the bottom. So you can only beat what's in front of you, and it, it is going to be more difficult. Of course, I'm not trying to say we've had an easy run so far, um, but there are a lot of the big boys still to play, and we'll see how we come out of that and see what happens in January. There's a very, very long way to go. And yeah, I'm over the moon with where we are now. Um, it's not what I expected, I don't think. I expected us to still play a good style of football, but come across some very good teams. And for us to be second at this point is incredible, even with the amount of goals we've conceded. So we've, we've clearly done something right. But realistically, if we can be pushing for a playoff place, whether we just miss out, I don't think it's the end of the world at all. Um, and then see what happens. I mean, I can imagine that we're going to make improvements in January. Um, and yeah, and by Christmas, it, that's the next marker. Everyone says, get to the first get 10 games and you'll kind of see how you're going to settle into the league. And if this is how the first 10 games have gone and this is a reflection of, of the league, then brilliant. And this is the reflection of our season. It's going to go wonderfully. But that next marker is then Christmas because you've essentially played each team once. So you kind of know where you sit. Whereas at 10 games, you you don't really know where teams are going to end up. So the probably the best fat side we've faced before Barrow Mansfield were Accrington and they've had a bit of a tough time since then. So you, you can never really tell where everyone is after the first 10, but it's definitely a marker. So we'll see once we've played everyone once um, and then where, where we think we'll stand then. But at this moment in time, I'd happily take mid-table um, and push him for a playoff place. 
Uh, Nathan says we're not a million miles off it. Might be some subtle tactical changes at the back. I'm sure Luke Williams knows our issues and is coming up with a solution. Derek Flowers, how, uh, a frustrated Derek Flowers, I detect. How can we have a corner and four passes later and the ball is with our keeper? That's scandalous, says Derek. Um, Chris Gosling, don't doubt we're not a million miles off it, says Chris Gosling. I uh, think it's a lack of personnel that is going to hold us back at this moment in time. Um, Pythagoram, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to digest this one. Um, we had the second worst defensive resilience in the National League last season. And this is based on the 30% of the time we didn't have the ball. So I'm guessing Pythagoras has done some uh, formularic calculation based on number of goals conceded per minutes, given that we only uh, given that we only don't have the ball for thirty minutes in a game. I'm guessing. Anyway, I, I think I understand the point he's making. Um, James Moore, I know we defend as a team. But when was the last time we can truly say we had a solid defence? I honestly think we have to go back to the team of 98. Strodder, Red Mile, Hogg, etc. Uh, Gary Lee says, the same team that capitulated against Stags thrashed Swindon two weeks ago, 3-0 at half-time when they'd not been beat neither. Just one of those days. As I've said time after time, Connell, Baldwin, Cameron and Brins seem to rotate a bad game apiece. Uh, Andrew Blatherwick, so as I reckon, 10 to 12 teams could push for promotion or playoffs. Not really any outstanding teams and no whipping boys. Interesting point. <laughs> yeah, when you look at Sutton and Forest Green and see the games they've given us, that's a good point, Andrew. Um, now, I know you want to get off very shortly, Claire. If we could just keep you for about another 10 minutes while we while we see whether Les can um, uh, mm. get himself sorted. Sorry to muck up your hectic social calendar. Uh, Apologise to Orla. Um, Right. Um, I'm of an opinion that, for what it's worth, that I think Luke at the minute is getting every bit as much out of the group of players that is available to him. We go with a small squad, which I think is a deliberate policy by the owners. Um, we have got injuries. Um, and we still wait to see the extent of the injury for John Bostock from Saturday. Um, but it is a very small squad. Um, I think Luke is extracting every ounce that he can out of this existing group of players. But I do think it's going to be quite interesting. Test is the wrong word, but I think it's going to be an interesting reaction from our owners and what they do or don't decide to do on January the 1st, when the transfer window reopens. Um, what's your view? Do you, th do you think we, we need to further improve, freshen up all of those phrases that football people use on January the 1st to maximise maximize our chances? Yeah, and I think you'll know more um, when it comes to that time. I think we all talk about the defence and, yeah, it can be approved, improved. But obviously, we've got two defenders that aren't really getting a sniff um, yeah. at the minute for various reasons. We we don't know the reasons. We don't know how they're training, uh, whether anything's going on in their personal life. We just don't know. So, of course, we can be saying, well, we've got two defenders here and they can't even get a sniff. And we clearly aren't going to buy in anyone in January when this is the case. But at the same time, they they would have been recalled by now, in my opinion, if they they've not even seen the bench half of the time so or it's just a case of they trust the players that we've got now um we don't know again if players had fell through the net late on during the last transfer window of people we thought we were going to get which is why we've ended up with loan players rather than um permanent um permanent players but again that's a question that will come to in January I think more for me, obviously, looking back at the Mansfield game, um, everybody says that it was a, a lot of defensive errors. And I think that can be seen all the way through the team. Um, again, the selection was a little bit weird for me. Uh, I know a few people have kind of called out Brindley a little bit, but 
and said he might not have been good enough last season. Um, we've obviously come into this season. He's changed his position a bit in quite a lot of the games that we've played. And he's he's been the central defender and he's looked good there. And then we kind of play Mansfield. And I kind of understand why Luke's done it with the uh, height of their centre forwards. But he's then been put back into a different position um, for, for like a one-off game. And then you've got obviously Kyle Cameron falling ill on the day of the game. There's a lot of different things that aren't excuses, but things that have changed for that game. Again, we've brought in Sam Slocum, who's played one game this season for us, and that was in the Cup the week before. Um, and a lot of people have criticised him, but again, it's the the way that they've been told to play and it just didn't work out on the day. Um, but then we kind of look at, I think somebody said there that it kind of seems that we don't always have all five, essentially, if you include the wing backs defenders on their game at the same time it seems to be somebody's making a mistake here or there whether that's down to um their quality at the end of the day that we are league two we're not the premier league do you know what i mean um but again it's down to the style of football we want to play if you want to go and get go to four four two again and go to four massive um defenders that are over six foot three then we can do that but yeah there's definitely improvements that we can be made um, and we'll see where we are in January and I'm sure we won't not sign anybody and I'm sure that we'll pick up injuries along the way and that changes things as well and it's who is available and what money that we want to spend so it'll be interesting but I, I definitely think there's room for improvement like I say that defensive midfield role and then acro across the back three but again I've said before the whole wing back situation it's great going forward and we've got a couple of the best wingers in the league Obviously, Jones, Austin, when he's out on the wing, does more than a good job. And then you've got Naman. And we, we've got players going forward on the wings. But again, you're asking them to do a lot by then getting back. Essentially, we're not playing with five defenders. We're playing with three. Um, so you are going to get be on the back foot when we are defending. But I think like all the players have said, you defend from the front. And I think that's that's also a big problem that we're not doing that and we lose the ball. Um, quite easily when we are trying to attack. Um, so it is difficult. And like Luke's always said, you, you're you going to lose the ball, you're going to concede goals and you're going to lose games. It's just the, the margins between how many that's going to be and whether we can win more than we lose. Um, a few more comments. So many players had an off day against Mansfield, says James Moore. Sam was awesome against Derby. He deserved to start. A quick straw poll among our flock. Slocum or Stone in goal for you? Uh, fingers on keyboards, off you go. Uh, if you want to uh, kind of like um, validate your opinion on either keeper or other, feel free. Uh, but Slocum or Stone? Uh, Nathan says, would love a player, I knew this one would come up, like Aidan Flint. Um, was uh, Plus, we've got all those rumours about an Irish defender from Drogheda, Connor. Keeley, his contract is up in, uh, well, I think it's December, actually, uh, when, because the Irish league season finishes in December. He was linked with knots. There's no, there's nothing to actually substantiate that we were in for him. Allegedly, knots made two bids for the player uh, and they were both turned down by Drogheda. Uh, right, here we go. Here's the quick straw poll. Hey, we'll even put you on the spot in a minute, Chloe, as well. Um, Du, 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 du. Uh, Notts County says Stone uh, Chris Gosling Stone Tim Baxter Stone Kenneth Pointer Stone Tim Lynham Stone David Amy Stone Nathan Stone uh, uh, Peter Cowlishaw Stone Paul Huskisson Stone Gerald Chihira Stone Martin Shipley Stone Blimey, well, I hope Sam's not listening to this. Ah, Stephen Newton, Slocum, uh, Shane Walker, Sam, very good shot stopper. Um, Ian Cooksey, neither, uh, uh, da, 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 so that's a different one. Uh, Andrew Batherwick, Stoner's first choice. Slocum is decent enough. Uh, Derek Flowers, there's no pleasing Derek tonight. He's obviously, as we would say in Nottingham, Chloe, your, your granddad would know this phrase. He's got a cob on. He's got a cob. It means he's not happy. Both keepers not good enough for various reasons. 
<laughs> Dan Stapp says Sam. Gary Lee says Stone. Uh, they are both a 7 out of 10 for me, says James. Uh, Elvis Bot Stone. Pythagoras Stone. Uh, Notts County says, is Brooks still injured? Uh, Andy Eason. Here we go. I knew there'd be some funnies coming in. Archie Mayer. Uh, David Skinner. Roy Brown. You will have no idea who Roy Brown is, Chloe. He was a goalkeeper for Notts County in um, the 70s. Um, Slocum or Stone for you as a matter of interest? Um, I'd say Stone. Um, I think there's much of a muchness between them. Um, Stone, obviously, younger than what Sam Soclum is. Um, shot stopping, much of a muchness, really. I've seen them both make very good saves. Obviously, um, Slocum's a little bit more experienced, but I think we bought in Stone for his distribution. And I think there's been a lot of arguments recently that that's kind of half of the problem, which is difficult considering that's kind of one of the things that we bought him in for and being able to play out from the back. But I think as he's grown with us um, at the start of the season, that's definitely improved. Um, and that Swindon game, I thought his distribution had improved massively since the last time I saw him. Um, and then obviously that's that's the kind of way that he's been taught. Um, whereas Slocum, being a little bit of an older keeper, He's never seen so much of the ball in his life as to when Luke Williams came in. I mean, I dread to think how many touches he had on Saturday because it, it seemed to all come his way. And and I think he put, was put in a really difficult position, to be completely honest. Um, obviously, you back yourself and you want to play every minute. Um, but he, he played one game for us. Um, I didn't see the game personally, but I heard he did have a good game. Um, but I think in terms of going forward on Saturday, it didn't help. We, we were either playing two yard passes between the the defenders and the goalkeeper and then to kind of obviously draw the team in and then when we were hitting it long the ball was going to nobody it was coming straight back but the the thing with that as well we weren't winning the second ball so it's not just the the keeper and the distribution we weren't winning the second ball either um but I, I think I, I would go stone um I, from what I've seen this season and obviously the age thing is is big but I do think um, that Slocum's obviously done a great job for us. But in terms of distribution, I think that was a, a, a one of our problems on Saturday. I mean, I don't know if the, any of the goals really that he could have done anything with. I think it was more of a defensive error. But in terms of actually going forward, uh, it was a bit, a bit of a difficult watch. But at the same time, we've got when he's got the ball, um, we had people not coming in, out from midfield to come and get the ball off him. We, a lot of the time we were expecting him to play this long ball across the pitch because I was looking and there, there wasn't anybody turning to him. Everybody had their backs to him, running into the other half and kind of hoping that he was going to reach one of them. And I think it was it's a bit unfair to ask that of him, especially when, when he hasn't played this season. He's not used to doing it, but... Hey ho, it's it's not the be all and end all, and it was it was the whole team. It wasn't individual performances. I think collectively we weren't good enough, but I think it was a strange decision to um, to drop Stone in the league and bring in Slocum for potentially one of the biggest games of our season. Yeah, I, th I think what it would suggest to me is that Luke feels there is literally like a we would say in an olden days a cigarette paper's width between the two keepers and their respective abilities because it is a big call it's a big call to you know i would say drop rotate mm -hmm. yeah arsenal are trying to pioneer this rotation aren't they with two first team choice keepers to rotate your keeper you don't normally rotate your keeper for one game so mm -hmm. My gut feel is that Sam would still be in goal for the trip to Gillingham. You know, we, we're not forced to know. Possibly Stone was a little bit under the weather Saturday or whatever. I, I, I don't know. I suspect not. Um, but I think that I think it kind of suggests, says to me that Luke um, feels they are of broadly comparable capabilities. Um, so I, I think it is going to be an interesting battle between the two of them. Um, you know, there's a lot of debate about distribution uh, featuring goalkeepers. The reality of the situation, I think, and we should give Nigel Clough and Mansfield credit for this, is that they came up with a system with five players to stick a press on us that was effective. You know, that was effective. They didn't, they didn't panic, did they? 
um you know going one down after three minutes you know i'm not a rugby man but you know it was very compelling watching the rugby last night with france and south africa france literally tore south africa to shreds for five or ten minutes and you think right this is a landslide to the french but the south africans absorbed it you know in the lion's den of paris came out and won. You know, we got off to a flyer against Mansfield, but ultimately Mansfield's game plan, I guess the parlance is, was executed um, better uh, than ours was. And I th- and I think we should give, although it, a lot of people wouldn't, uh, should give a lot of credit to Mansfield. They played very well. Luke made the point in his after-match press conference that Mansfield are the best team that we've played um, in a long, long while. And I, and I think he said last season as well, which I would take for him to mean that Mansfield have played better against Knotts than Wrexham did in those two games last season. A um, few comments. Nathan says, Slocum had no chance with the goals, but at the same time, I think Stone has been decent. Was surprised with the change. Would be happy to see either in the net. Atrophis says, I miss Mayer. If he can handle a penalty shootout at Wembley, he can handle a League Two game. Well, interestingly, he's still in the National League, isn't he? Uh, With Gateshead. I think he's doing quite well there at the minute. Um, On another note, says Ian Cooksey, um, McGoldrick, Cameron and Rowling are one booking away from missing a game. So a thin squad could be a lot thinner very soon. Um... To, 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 to Dale Pike, if anyone is going by train on Saturday, the train from Nottingham is on a diversion, so it's going to take an extra hour. Quite correct, Dale. Uh, Chloe's granddad, I'm sure, will be able to issue us updates throughout the week. I'm going from Grantham on the East Coast main line. I drive out there. That's just over an hour. Uh, but I think it's going out via Oakham or some sort of branch line around the side. So, yeah, it's up to three hours if you go into St Pancras uh, from Nottingham. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, Chloe, we'll let you go. Uh, final question. Um, Gillingham, Gillingham, and we have, and, and this I think is where we all jump up and down. And the same people who jump up and down are the first people to moan like crazy when owners sack managers. Uh, everyone gets an, you know, seem to have these knee jerk reactions. I think one of the managerial changes that really surprised, I think there's four gone. I think there's four gone in League Two so far. Uh, obviously, Graham Alexander went at uh, MK Dons today. One of the real surprising ones was Gillingham sacking their managers after four 1 0 wins and then a defeat. Um, uh, what do you, uh, what do we expect from Gillingham? What do you want to see from Knotts? When we took a towsing at Sutton Park, the Lincoln Cup game in midweek, it then sparked a remarkable run. Are we capable of doing that again after Mansfield starting at Gillingham? Absolutely, definitely. And no matter how we play, we know we've got it in us. Um, but again, it, to me, this league, I will take a draw away no matter who it is to. I really don't care whether they're the top of the league or bottom of the league. I will always take a draw away from home. Anything else is a bonus. Um, yeah, it, it'd be great to get a win, obviously, um, and kind of bounce back. And it's kind of forgotten about a little bit of Mansfield. An away win is huge to me um, in this league. There's a lot of tough places to go. Um, obviously, they have the... Um, the, the new manager bounce, as, as some may say. Um, and it'll be difficult to obviously know what to expect, but I'm expecting a tough game nonetheless. Uh, it's still the exact same set of players that have done had a very good start to the season, um, new manager or old manager. Um, it's not going to be easy. Um, but yeah, I, I'd absolutely take a draw. Um, anything else is a bonus. And hope we can go back to what we know and kind of um iron out any defensive mistakes we're obviously still get still gonna have those after not just after the after the loss um but yeah just just get back to how we know we can play I go back to watching against as against Swindon the other week and it's possibly one of the best halves of football that I've seen not playing in a very very long time so the same set of players have got it in them and I'm, they they all know what Saturday meant but 
they've they've got a good mentality within them. I think um, I think it was Langstaff that summed it up very well. Never too high, never too low, um, and you can't let let you, especially as a player, you can't get too high because then something like this happens and it kind of disrupts your season. But I think they'll be back in training and focusing on the next game and. Obviously, they'll be they'll be looking at the past game and analysing it like they will do on the videos. But we've got to look forward now, and hopefully, we might have um, one or two back from injury or in in and around the squad to um, boost morale. And hopefully, it'll be a good game. Chloe, um, we, 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 I've persuaded you. Not that I gave you a lot of choice to sort of uh, <laughs> stop on a little bit longer. So thank you very much. I'll let you now get off on your hectic social life um <laughs> enjoy it while you can when you get to my age you don't have one so uh enjoy uh and we will see you very soon uh for the closing 10 minutes of the show uh i'll be guiding you through it so please feel free i'm full page on the screen now that's a bit of a dis disturbing sight isn't it um i'll read some more messages out i want you to uh, as we're coming up to our 5,000th game against Gillingham, uh, we've done a bit before, but let's just see where, because there have been some other pretty special games since we last did it. 5,000 games, your all-time favourite Knox County game. Fire away, get them on the keyboards. Uh, and if there's a particular reason for that, I don't know, you might have got married that day or something. Um, let us know. So far away, all-time favourite, Notts County game. Uh, James Moore, he's still seething from Mon uh, from Saturday. Let it go, James. Come on. If we'd have given it a real go and lost, it would be easier to accept. We just didn't seem to have the fight or urgency to get back in the game. Right. James, I just think Mansfield did a number on us, if I'm honest with you. Um, J -j -j Atrophis is not pulling any punches I think Gillingham are frauds Who have been very lucky <laughs> Chris Gosling Gillingham forums Are full of rumours that Steve Bruce Is in the running to be appointed there. He was there at some point in the past Wasn't he? We'll be surprised if that's true But he started his career there Yes that is correct um, So there is a link Dale Pikett on the subject of managers. The Gateshead manager is six to one on favourite for the MK Dons job. Is he? I'll, I'll take your word for it, Dale. I'm sure you're right. Uh, that's Mike Williamson. Uh, and uh, it's in the book. And I've gone and lost the only copy. Hang on. Here it is. Oh, only copy. It's in the book. Uh, Mike Williamson was approached uh, and discussed the knots vacancy. Um Ahead of Luke, I believe. Um, but that one didn't materialise at Knotts. Personally, I think he's very good. Um, uh, he's been very loyal to Gateshead. It'd be interesting to see, and he has had other offers, I believe. It'd be interesting to see whether he decides if this, you know, six to one on, and there is an interest, if he thinks it's the right club um, to move to. Obviously has very strong roots in the North East. Um, I just hope Jody is back, says uh, Atrophis. Andrew Blatherwick, Gillingham might be too tough to spark a reaction. Should be going full tilt against Newport next Tuesday. One game at a time, Andrew. Uh, Remy Sky um from new york uh hello my brethren pies um shane walker have they still got that scaffold away end at gillingham uh right yes uh they have <laughs> it's not great is it those of that were there for gillingham you remember when they scored the goals in the last five ten minutes we made a few strange subs with ricardo monis um yes they have i hope it don't rain um uh, but while we're on the subject of Gillingham, I spoke to the club today. Um, so 500 places, free, excellent gesture by the owners to commemorate the 5,000th game. About 350 to 400 have gone so far. So there is still space if you want to go free on the club, yeah, on organised travel. I think about 300 or so have gone uh, on the organised uh, buses. Then I think also the club very kindly uh, paid for Akko's coach and uh, the official supporters club as well. So I think that then the, the touching about 400 who have availed themselves of this offer. Uh, if you've not already been contacted by the club, they've asked me to say to you, you should expect a call or contact tomorrow. But basically, if you've been in touch to avail yourselves of free travel already, 
you will be getting it. Um, Favourite games. Uh, let's have a look. Shane Walker. Villa away. I presume he means 1981. Uh, Chris John Wright. Wrexham 3, not 2. I detect a Wrexham fan. Uh, Boreham Wood was special. 3-0. Uh, Chris Gosling, uh, sorry, Bournemouth Cup tie was special. Hang on, no, 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 no grammar there, Christopher. Three 0 Spurs was great. Plus the two one versus Forest. Two one versus Forest was the second year when we were back in the top flight. Yeah, I think that's probably about my number one. Uh, Lee Scarrett, Division Two, um, not to Newcastle Two. People are saying, why is that so special to Lee? He was ball boy that match. And on match of the day, there you go. Uh, beating Forest 2 1 at home, says Paul Huskisson, a not dissimilar vintage to me. Uh, AD Clark, 3 0 against Spurs and Klinsman. Yes, that was a good one. Um, do, 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 beating, yeah, that's the game. Uh, Stephen Newton beating Forest 3 2 at Meadow Lane in 1982 83. What a game. Trevor Christie, as he modestly tells me, turned on a manhole cover. Uh, and scored Knotts' winner in the second half away at the Cop End, where I was like 18 years old, jumping up and down. Good day. Um, Derek Flowers. Ah, Derek is pleased. He's forgotten all his moans. Manchester City game 1-0 when Steve Cherry scored, every, uh, saved everything that came his way. Um, beating Forest 2 at the City ground with a Christie double uh, and Raddy saving uh, a Robertson penalty, says Andrew Blatherwick. I'm not sure it was a Christie double. Did Hooksy get one of those two? I might be wrong. Uh, but Raddy did save a Robbo penalty, as I reminded Robbo many times in our days at Leicester. Uh, Nathan says, Gillingham, like us, when they uh, lose, they lose big and they don't score a lot. If we can break them down, we could do very well there. Uh, James Moore, best game in recent times has to be the Boreham Wood comeback and the Wembley game. Totally unbelievable. Yeah, I'm surprised, actually. Uh, you're the first person, James, that says Wembley. You know, I thought a lot of people would wade in on that one. Um, you know, for for theatre drama and a sense of occasion, then you know it it, it is it, it is up there. Um, Gary Lee, uh, Reading away one three one. Paul Barnes hat trick wore the gold home ales kit. Andrew Blatherwick, uh, what about the Scanlon hat-trick versus Sheffield Wednesday? 75, 76? Um, Atrophis, Anglo-Italian final at Old Wembley. Not that I can remember it, lol. Right-o. Uh, Ian Cooksey, Knotts versus Oldham, Christmas 75, won 5-1. Great game. Uh, Remy Sky, for personal reasons, probably not Juve friendly. Yeah, that's, it's in my top three. It's in my top three. Uh, Dave Woolley, 90. Ah, yes. Dave Woolley, 1976 against Fulham. We won away 5-1. That's right. Fulham had Bobby Moore, George Best, Rodney Marsh playing for Fulham. And Bobby Campbell got sacked the following day after losing to Knotts. And a shame that we've had problems with Les because Les was in that game, I think, and could have told us a bit about it. Um Dale Pike, it Charlie Palmer Day uh, when we beat Forest um, away versus Charlton about ten years ago. Johnny Forte hat trick, one four one four nil up at half time. I do remember that. Um, do, 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 do. Notts County, yeah. Uh, Ask me mine, yeah. It would be Notts three, Forest two, um, uh, and equally. First game back in the top flight, 81. Um, not the Villa, as in first game against Forest. Won 2 0 at the city ground, which has also been um, mentioned. Uh, Derek Gill, Middlesbrough in the playoffs. 1 1 away with a 1 0 home win. Uh, Paul Harding, midweek. Remember him getting the header. Uh, Kenneth Pointer says Brighton at Wembley. Great day. Uh, A.D. Clark, Paul, will there be a competition giveaway of your book? Maybe a signed copy. I'm feeling lucky again. <laughs> Yes, there will be. Q uh, gratuitous plugs with the book. 15 quid, perfect Christmas present, 350 pages. Um, there's some good stories. So one or two very kind people have left some nice reviews on Amazon. Uh, one or two people said they, they literally couldn't put it down. They maybe leave, lead marginally sad lives. But, you know, there's quite a bit in it. Quite, I'm pleased with it. Um, so... 
later this week, I should be able to give you a launch date. And of course, AB, we will be doing some signed copies. I'm hoping uh, you don't need me to sign it, surely. But I'm hoping that the two gentlemen here, uh, Mr. Williams and Mr. Langstaff, I'm going to get a few signed copies from them. Uh, so you can have those. Perfect Christmas present. Um, do, 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 do. Right, spoke to the club today. Let's kill a few conspiracy theories while we're at it. Um, people have said to me, Will Randall has been taken off the club's um, squad list on the website. You know, has he now left the club? What's happened to Adam Chickson? What's happened to Jody Jones? Will Randall, where is he? I've, I've just treble checked with the club. These players are all either injured, rehabbing, injury, getting back to full fitness. Please, no conspiracy theories. I think the club generally, Luke, doesn't like to overshare, I think is perhaps a polite way of putting putting it, injury updates. You know, he prefers to keep his cards close to his chest, but you shouldn't read into that any conspiracy theories. Um Saturday for those of us going to Gillingham. So if you haven't got a seat yet, you will. You can get a complimentary one from the club. Get onto the club tomorrow. Um, should point out that um, before the game, Knotts will be getting an engraved plaque. This is something the Football League have done for other clubs that have recently completed five thousand games. So there'll be a, a presentation on the pitch before the game. Um, now, I'm pretty sure Gillingham are in blue and white, which means we won't be. Uh, if I tell you what, if ever there was a season to bring out a third choice kit, this was it, wasn't it? This was it. I, I, we've, got, we've had kind of Colchester, Barrow, and now Gillingham all in blue, which means we can't really wear our blue. But a lot of these blue and white kits have quite a bit of white in, which ours does. But anyway, it's not a problem. But we'll be in black and white on Saturday. Um, do, 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 do. Someone else has given you the train information. I uh, hope as many of you can make the journey down there. Uh, Notts County, spelled uh, with a K, C and a T. Uh, can you autograph my Kindle? No. Um, do, do, do. Andrew Blatherwick, I missed the Sir Charlie Palmer Day game. I was in hospital accompanying my wife who gave birth to our second daughter that day. All I can say, Andrew, is... I thought you were a proper Knotts fan. Clearly you're not. Got your priorities all wrong. Uh, Chris Gosling, um, I get it when someone is carrying a knock, but can't see any harm with giving us updates on long-term injuries. Uh, Nathan says, prefer playing the home kit whenever it doesn't clash anyway. Well, we're certainly on a bit of a run of that at the minute. Um, sorry we couldn't talk a little bit more about the whole 5,000 game scenario. Uh, Les has been having internet problems, so we couldn't relive all his goals, and uh, uh, I think he played in the 3,000th game against Forest, did he? Um, so apologies for that, but hopefully you've enjoyed um, this evening. Um, we'll be back next Monday. Hope to see as many of you as possible at Gillingham. Yes, it's that grotty end End. I hope it's not raining on the little like scaffolding and everything. But we owe them one, don't we? Let's be perfectly honest. Uh, the way we got relegated out of League One that season, we, we, we certainly do. Um, book, yeah, coming soon. Get it on. If you've not already got the Kindle and want to get the Kindle, do that. See if we can get to number one. We dropped down to number six today. So uh, that's not so good, but never mind. All joking aside, brilliant. Thank you very much for all your support. I hope you find the book. Uh, interesting reading. There's plenty to talk about and it does make a good Christmas present. So if anyone in your distant relatives, mum, dads, grannies, uncles, cousins, whatever, it's difficult for Christmas presents for them, isn't it? 15 quid, you know, and we'll see if we can get one or two of them to sign it as well. OK, um, thank you very much indeed. Uh, cheerio to one and all. Um, thank you for listening and watching tonight. We'll be back on Monday next week. Cheers for now. Bye bye.